the Macmillan TLA Book Buzz. I'm Kristen Luby, the Marketing Manager of the Macmillan Children's School and Library Team, and today you'll also be hearing from Emily Day from the Macmillan Library Marketing Team and Anthony Parisi from TOR, who will be talking about some uh, YA and adult books. We're excited to share some of our new and upcoming books with you, uh, so let's get started. As I said, I'm Kristen Luby. I'm presenting on behalf of the Mac Kids School and Library Team. If you have any questions about any of the books I'm talking about today, you can feel free to email me or tweet us at MacKidsSL. We would love to hear from you, so please don't have to hesitate to reach out. Okay, first, before we get started, I wanted to invite you all to visit our TLA virtual booth on our website, MacKidsSchoolAndLibrary.com. I speak on behalf of our entire staff and all of our authors when we say we were so sorry to miss you at TLA this year, um, but you don't have to miss out on all of the resources that we were bringing with us. You can visit our virtual booth online to watch video messages from all of our authors who were scheduled to appear at TLA. They wanted to say hello and share some information about their books, so definitely check those videos out. You can also find information there on all of the um, ARCs that we were bringing with us. You can download those ARCs on NetGalley, so please visit our, our site to find out more information about how to do that. Um, you'll also see all of the amazing books on this year's Texas reading lists. Um, so follow that bit.ly link on the screen and it will lead you right to the TLA virtual booth on our site. Okay, so now I'm gonna share some of our books. Um, for, uh, that I'm excited for you to read, starting with picture books. Um, in case you aren't already familiar with We Are Water Protectors, I have to talk about this book again because it is one of my favorite picture books of the year. It was released in March and it just got its fourth starred review from School Library Journal. Inspired by the many indigenous-led movements across North America, this book encourages young readers to stand up and protect one of Earth's most important natural resources, water. And in addition to its powerful message and important um, message. The watercolor art in this book is beautiful. Um, it's just absolutely stunning. Um, you'll see on the next slide the interiors um, from the book. Yes, so just beautiful watercolor art. Both the author and illustrator are um, uh, native, and so this beautiful Native Voices book, picture book, I hope you'll share with your readers. We've added a great activity to our website, which uh, will be perfect for your Earth Day celebrations on the next slide. Um, young readers can take the pledge to be a water protector and learn how their actions impact the environment and how they can be more environmentally friendly. So visit our site to download the activity kit and take the pledge. Um, so our next picture book is All Welcome Here. I know it's only April, so back to school time feels like a long way off, but I have to share this beautiful picture book that is destined to become an evergreen favorite for all new students. All Welcome Here features haiku poetry by acclaimed children's author James Preller and stunning collage style art from Mary Grandpre, the world-renowned illustrator who you may recognize from the Harry Potter series. Um, on the next slide, you'll see some artwork from the inside of the book. This is truly a celebration of all things back to school and captures all the excitement and anxiety that students feel at the start of a new school year. Um, continuing on to the next slide, it's all about uh, buying new supplies, running to catch the school bus, finding your new classroom, meeting your teachers, and making new friends. My favorite spread um, is on the next slide. Um, it's That's a, another uh, picture of him getting on the bus. And then on the next slide, my favorite spread is the illustration of the school's library, or as the text describes it, the school's heartbeat. Featuring a diverse cast of characters, this book is perfect for back to school story times or anytime you want to remind your community that all are welcome in your school or library. Um, the next picture book I'm going to talk about is Randy the Badly Drawn Horse. Um, one day a child draws a horse and then tells his mom how beautiful and special his horse Randy is. But now, of course, um, Randy knows that he is so beautiful and special, even though he has never seen himself. From his gorgeous mane and dazzling smile to his skills as a chef and adventurer, Randy is unstoppable. That is until he sees his own reflection and realizes, wait, where is my gorgeous mane and dazzling smile? You'll see that on the next slide, uh, the illustration. There's Randy, he's beautiful. His child has drawn a beautiful horse. And Randy, um, on the next slide, finally sees his reflection. Randy's self-love comes right back at the end of the book once he realizes that he is loved for being exactly who he is, no matter how badly drawn he is. It's illustrated with cra uh, crayon drawings and familiar arts and crafts materials, including popsicle sticks and glitter glue. Um, this is an imaginative laugh out loud book that celebrates being proud of who you are and comfortable with who you are. It's a laugh out loud, funny read aloud that little crafters and artists will love. Okay, there and there's Randy finally realizing how beautiful he is inside and out. Uh, moving on to middle grade, um, once there was a monster who loved a boy and Hannah Barnaby wrote a chapter book about them. The first picture book in the, uh, the, sorry, the first middle grade book in this new chapter series, Monster and Boy is perfect for newly independent readers. 
uh, featuring adorable two-color drawings of two of the best friends you'll ever meet by illustrator Anusha Syed. On the next slide, you'll see some of those illustrations. In this first adventure, Monster accidentally swallows Boy, and when he finally coughs him back up, Boy is only the size of a grasshopper. The two friends need to find a way to make things right. But true friends always forgive each other, even when one swallows the other. And um, the friendship between Monster and Boy will have readers laughing along with them. It's full of humor and heart. It's the perfect book for Monsters Inc. fans, young and old. Next is The Brave. In James Bird's debut middle grade novel, The Brave, readers are introduced to Colin, who has a unique condition that compels him to count every letter spoken aloud to him. The kids at school bully him and the adults around him are frustrated by his behavior. So his father sends him to live with his mother, who he has never met before, on the Native American reservation where she lives. On the reservation, he finds a new home that is warm, welcoming, and accepting of his condition, and a new friend who works with him to overcome his challenges. This heartwarming and lyrical story is based on the author's own experiences of meeting his Native family for the first time. It's perfect for fans of magical realism and the book Rain Rain by Anne M. Martin. Next is Fly on the Wall. If you haven't read Remy Lai's debut Pie in the Sky, please go read that book immediately. It was one of my favorites last year. It's available in hardcover and trade paperback. It's a sweet story about immigration, the challenges a young boy faces when his family immigrates to a new country, but it's also a really funny and relatable story about two brothers and the illustrations throughout are really wonderful. Remy's new book, Fly on the Wall, is a wonderful new standalone story about a boy named Henry who has a very overprotective family and he decides to fly halfway around the world alone to prove um, his independence. It's kind of like a home alone in reverse. It's a super funny adventure story with tons of heart. It has three star reviews and SLJ says it's perfect for fans of Big Nate and the Wimpy Kid series. On the next slide, you'll see the illustrations from the book. The whole story is written in diary format on notebook paper with tons of illustrations throughout and your reluctant readers will love this book. On the next slide, uh, we have two wonderful new middle grade books from two authors who were scheduled to join us at TLA this year. Both of these books are perfect for mystery fans and animal lovers. And the authors have left some really nice messages for you on our website. The Total Eclipse of Nestor Lopez is uh, Texas author Adriana Cuevas' middle grade debut. And on our site, you'll see she wrote a really nice note about why this book is perfect for Texas readers. It's the story of a 12 year old Cuban American boy named Nestor Lopez. He and his mother moved to Texas to live with his grandmother um, because his father is in the military and is currently deployed. Um, and not only does Nestor have to deal with being the new kid in school again, uh, he is also hiding a secret. He can talk to animals and he'll have to use that special power to save the disappearing animals in his town. Um, Josephine Cameron's A Dog Friendly Town is a cozy mystery set in America's number one dog friendly town where a 12 year old Epic's family runs a dog friendly bed and breakfast. And when the jewel encrusted collar of one of their famous dog guests goes missing, Epic has to crack the case. Um, in our TLA virtual booth, Josephine shared a really beautiful video message. She wrote a thank you note to her hometown library when her first book was published, Maybe a Mermaid. Um, she shares why libraries were important to her growing up and continue to be important to children everywhere. It's a really beautiful love letter to librarians, so I hope you'll go watch that video. You can also request both of these um, arcs on NetGalley. Um, next, History Comics. Many of you may already be familiar with the science comic series from our graphic novel imprint, First Second. And if you're not, I highly encourage you to check that series out. The books cover a wide range of scientific topics from solar systems to mechanics and engineering um, to the animal kingdom and beyond. They break down really complex topics in a really accessible way through comic illustrations. And now I'm very excited to say that science comics has a sister series, History Comics. The series will launch with two books on the Chicago fire and the Roanoke colony. The new graphic novel series introduces readers to historical events um, and carries them through the story in a really engaging and accessible comic format, as you can see from the interiors on the next slide here. What I love about this series is that the illustrations make history really personable and relatable, and I think uh, will add a new dimension and understanding to these historical events for young readers. Um, on the next slide, you'll see um, some from the Roanoke Colony. There are more history comics to come, including books on the Challenger disaster later this fall and Wild Mustangs next year. Um, finally, for middle grade, All He Knew is the new book from Prince Honor winner Helen Frost. It's a, a beautiful new historical novel in verse based on true events. It's the story of Henry, a young boy who has been deaf from an early age, but he is intelligent. Um, but when he starts school, he's labeled as unteachable. Um, he's sent to a bleak institution where he's misunderstood, underestimated, and really harshly treated. 
um, until in 1942, Victor, who is part of the civilian public service program, arrives at the institution to serve as an attendant. And quickly he sees that um, although Henry is deaf, he is far from unteachable. He is brave, he is clever, and sometimes mischievous. Um, and under Victor's care, Henry begins to see how he can change his life for the better. Um, it's a heartbreaking story, but ultimately hopeful. Um, and it provides some sharp insight into a little known chapter of history. Um, moving on to young adults, Hunted by the Sky is inspired by medieval India from critically acclaimed author Chanaz Batena, who previously had written in the realistic uh, fiction genre but this is her first in a two book fantasy series. Um, it's wonderful because not only is it a great fantasy, um, but it explores themes of race, identity, and class. It's told from alternate, uh, alternating points of view. Hunted by the Sky follows a young girl with a star-shaped birthmark who is prophesied to be the downfall of a tyrant king and the boy she falls in love with who, who owes his loyalty to the crown. Um, this is a gripping adventure series that will leave readers on the edge of their seats and hungry for book two. Um, in Displacement, um, Displacement is inspired by Kiku Hu's own family history. Uh, Kiku is a debut author and she delivers a powerful historical fiction graphic novel in Displacement. Um, this fi the fictional version of Kiku in the story doesn't know much about her family's history. When she goes on a trip to San Francisco with her mother, that all changes. She finds herself transported through time to the 1940s. Xenophobia against Japanese Americans has reached a fever pitch and the United States government has begun sending people of Japanese descent to live in internment camps. When Kiku finds herself in a camp, she begins to understand the full context of her family's history. This is a thoughtful and deeply relevant story about family and collective memory and the history of racism and xenophobia against Asian Americans in the United States. Um, Six Angry Girls by Adrian Kissner. Adrian Kissner is the author of Dear Rachel Maddow and the Confusion of Laurel Graham, and she's back with a new YA novel that's perfect for fans of Moxie. When Millie is kicked off the all boys mock trial team, Six angry girls start a rival team to smash the patriarchy and knit some truly righteous pink hats. I love this story of feminism and friendship. It's got a smart, diverse cast of girls who will empower young readers um, and young women to take charge. Um, now that I found you, fans of Jenny Han will love Christina Forrest's YA contemporary romances. If you haven't read her de debut, I Want to Be Where You Are, you are missing out. That was a road trip romance starring a ballet dancer and her annoying neighbor. Um, Christina delivers another addictive page turner in Now That I Found You. This is the story of teen celebrity Evie, um, who um, is trying to find her famous movie star grandma, um, who has gone missing before an awards show. Evie enlists the help of the last person who saw her grandma before she vanished, um, Milo, who is a cute musician, of course. They set off on a manhunt across New York City. There's plenty of romance and adventure to come. Um, and finally, I want to introduce you to a new a uh, line of comics from First Second for adult and young adult readers, World Citizen Comics. World Citizen Comics is designed to give readers a foundational knowledge of civics and media literacy um, that is crucial to understanding today's political climate and issues. Especially in this election year, it's important that students and young people have this foundational knowledge to be able to participate in this political discourse as informed citizens. The first book in the uh, series, the first two books in the series are coming this year. Um, first is Unrig, How to Fix Our Broken Democracy. Uh, you'll see an interior from that on the next page. It's written by uh, Daniel G. Newman, a national expert on government accountability and money in politics, um, and is illustrated by George O'Connor, who graphic novel fans may recognize from his Olympians graphic novel series. Um, the second book coming later this fall is Fault Lines in the Constitution, which is on the next slide, by acclaimed children's author Cynthia Levinson and constitutional law scholar Sanford Levinson. Um, you, remember, you may remember they published Fault Lines in the Constitution um, as a prose book a, a few years ago, but now they've brilliantly adapted this into a graphic novel format. Um, many schools have new civic examination requirements, and this book will meet that need especially well for today's visually oriented students. Um, it introduces readers to this important founding document and breaks down how this document impacts today's government, making this document incredibly relevant to their lives as um, the authors discuss some of the modern day issues that have arisen from the Constitution and offer some possible solutions to them. Um, so I'll definitely hope you check out that series. Um, in conclusion, thank you all for listening. I wanted to thank you all for the hard work you're doing during this difficult time. Our team is here to support you. Please visit our site where you'll find lots of other activities and resources, including author read-alouds. We have tons of virtual events and webinars coming up. 
So please visit our site for more information on those. You can sign up for our newsletter to receive all of our updates um, via email. And again, if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me um, on email or reach out on Twitter. Um, and now I'm gonna pass you over to Emily Day. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Emily Day from McMillan's Library Marketing Department. Um, these are all of the ways you can get in touch with us. Uh, and we are we love to hear from librarians, especially during this time when we can't see you in person at conferences. So please, please reach out with any questions or just to say hi. We would love to hear from you. If you are interested in reading eGalleys on Edelweiss, here are the steps to follow to do that. Uh, these steps can also be found on our website, so if you missed them now, no worries, you can find them there. And don't forget to check out my reviews of YA on our website. I review all of, most of our uh, upcoming titles as well as some backlist. There are occasional guest posts, so you can check that out on our website. And now on to the books. First up is Lobazona by Romina Garber. In this Argentine folklore inspired novel, Romina Garber weaves a tale filled with magic and romance and wait for it, werewolves. Yes, werewolves, that's right. Werewolves are back. This is the story about 16 year old Manuela. She is an undocumented immigrant from Argentina and she is on the run trying to escape deportation. Her journey takes her from Miami to a secret world of folklore where witches and werewolves roam as she discovers the truth about who she is. Next up is Court of Lions by Samaya Dowd. This is the sequel to Mirage. This tells a tale of two identical girls. One is a princess, the other is a rebel, but only one can rule the empire. Amani desperately wants to continue helping the rebellion and fighting for her people's freedom, but Princess Merim has has cornered her into silence and threatened her to re sorry threatened to reveal her to everyone. Now Amani must decide whether she will continue to aid the rebellion or put her family and herself in mortal danger. Where Dreams Descend by Janella Angelis. I want you to imagine. Phantom of the Opera meets Moulin Rouge meets Carabal, and now you have Where Dreams Descend, an immersive debut fantasy about a star showgirl who must win a dangerous magician's competition in order to secure her freedom. This book has a diverse cast of characters and lush world building, and Where Dreams Descend is a stunning and romantic fantasy that you definitely won't want to miss. The Insomniacs by Merritt Weisenberg. Part love story, part eerie suspense, The Insomniacs is a sharp and unsettling contemporary romantic debut about two teens who can't sleep, uncovering the secrets of the neighborhood by night. Ingrid hasn't been able to sleep since the day she fell off the high dive and got a concussion, and she can't remember anything about the incident. Van, Ingrid's neighbor, former best friend, and forever crush, also has trouble sleeping. So they start not sleeping together as they work to piece Ingrid's memory back together and discover some unsettling secrets along the way. Fable by Adrian Young. First, there was Elin, the Viking warrior in Sky in the Deep. Then there was Tova, the powerful truth tongue in The Girl the Sea Gave Back. Now, let me introduce you to Fable. Fable lives in a world made dangerous by the sea and by those who wish to profit from it. But the sea is the only home she's ever known. Now, she must find her place and her family while trying to survive in a world built for men. Fable is filled with all of the action, emotion, and lyrical writing that you love from Adrienne Young. The Silvered Serpent by Roshni Chakshi. Roshni Chakshi has returned to the dark and glamorous world of the Gilded Wolves with this dazzling sequel. Severin and his team are once again on the hunt for an ancient artifact, but they're also desperate to make amends for what they lost in Paris. This time, their journey takes them to Russia, where they hunt for a long lost artifact rumored to grant the power of God. The stakes are higher, the action is more intense, and the characters will break your heart and put it back together again. 
and it now has three starred reviews with School Library Journal calling it the sleeker, smarter, sharper, and bloodier follow-up that fans of the Gilded Wolves deserve. Historically Inaccurate by Shea Bravo. After her mother is deported, Soledad is doing everything she can to keep her life together. On top of a full-time course load at school, she also has a part-time job to support herself. And then she decides to join the history club at her community college, which has a very odd initiation process. As she completes the in initiation and joins the club, Soledad uncovers the truth about what's really going on in the club and learns that fitting in is just as hard and maybe harder as being yourself. I'm so excited about this one. Hush by Dylan Farrow. From activist Dylan Farrow comes a sweeping new fantasy set in a unique and terrifying world where those in power have the magic to control and silence the truth. 17-year-old Shay fears she may be cursed after the death of her brother, but when her mother is killed, Shay suspects foul play and sets her sights on justice. Hush is a powerful feminist fantasy full of twists that casts a ray of light into the shadows of a society based on silencing and manipulation, and it's perfect for fans of The Hazelwood, The Gracier, and The Handmaid's Tale. A Golden Fury by Samantha Coho. This debut from Samantha Coho is set in 18th century Oxford in a dangerous world of alchemy and betrayal. Thea Hope dreams of following in her alchemist mother's footsteps, and the pair are close to creating the Philosopher's Stone, which grants the possessor immortality and the power to turn any metal into gold. But when Thea's mother suddenly destroys the stone, Thea learns that the stone is cursed and anyone who tries to create it will lose their sanity. Thea is sent to Oxford for her safety and to live with her father, who doesn't know she exists. And she soon must figure out how to save the people she loves without destroying herself in the process. The Puppet Master's Apprentice by Lisa DeSelm. I love fairy tale retellings, so I'm so excited about The Puppet Master's Apprentice. This is Pinocchio meets Frankenstein, where a young puppet maker is commissioned by a dark-hearted tyrant to build an assassin. Pirouette has no choice but to accept, but she can't help but wonder, is she making a masterpiece or a monster? Uh, and this is fairy tale lover Lisa DeSelm's debut novel. Goblin King by Cara Barbieri. In this sequel to White Stag, Janik, our fierce protagonist, might have to sacrifice everything to save her world from destruction. Goblin King is filled with nonstop action and a strong romance set against a dark and dangerous world. This is perfect for readers of fantasy, action, adventure, and romance, so basically everyone. And finally, When They Call You a Terrorist, The Young Adult Edition by Patrice Kahn Colors and Asha Bendel. The adult, of her, the, sorry, the adult edition of this poetic memoir was an instant New York Times bestseller. And this YA version is adapted with photos and journal entries and is an empowering reflection on humanity and Black Lives Matter. This is a necessary and timely account of survival, strength, and resilience that asks us to remember that protest in the interest of the most vulnerable comes from love. That's it from me. Um, and next up is Anthony from Tor. Thank you. Hi everyone, I'm Anthony Parisi, the Associate Director of School and Library Marketing at Tor. And I'm thrilled to have the opportunity to talk with you today about some amazing titles publishing this summer and fall. So I'm just gonna jump right in with our middle grade list um, from our imprint, Starscape. First up is Bella Story by New York Times bestselling author W. Bruce Cameron. The puppy world of author W. Bruce Cameron continues to expand with the latest in his puppy tales, the Young Reader series inspired by his best-selling A Dog's Purpose series and their subsequent movie adaptations. Bella's story is inspired by A Dog's Way Home, telling the story of Bella, this adorable pup on the cover here, who was one day picked up by animal control. 
Bella waits and waits for her boy Lucas to come and get her from the foster home, but days go by and he does not come. But finally, Bella realizes what she needs to do, and she escapes to find Lucas. Not even 400 miles of dangerous Colorado wilderness won't get in her way. This is an adventure story filled with cute illustrations throughout and a reading and activity guide at the back of the book for educators. Bruce also expanded his puppy universe with a newly released, fully illustrated, early chapter book series called Lily to the Rescue. So there will now be puppy books for every level of readers, which makes his books perfect for family reading time. Bella's story is coming out soon on May 12th. Next from Tour Teen is A Song Below Water by Bethany C. Morrow. An enthralling tale of black girl magic and searing social commentary ready to rattle the bones. This is what Danielle Clayton, New York Times bestselling author of the Bell series, had to say upon reading Bethany C. Morrow's YA debut. Set in Portland, Oregon, this contemporary fantasy follows two best friends as they come to terms with their magical identities against today's challenges of racism and sexism. Tavia is a siren struggling to keep her true identity a secret in the aftermath of a siren murder trial that rocks the nation. Feeling alone in a city where very few black people with magical powers exist, Tavia finds solace in her friendship with Effie, a young black girl trying to make sense of her own magical abilities and unravel her haunted past. Outside of the praise of this book has already received from, count from countless YA authors such as Daniel Jose Older, L.L. McKinney, and Jay Coles, A Song Below Water has also been named one of Forbes' top 10 most anticipated books of 2020 and has received a starred review from Booklist, which says, Morrow expertly and smartly explores race, bigotry, oppression, and injustice against a backdrop of ordinary life with a dose of the supernatural added to the mix. A Song Below Water is a must read for the lovers of fantasy and contemporary stories alike. A Song Below Water comes out on June 2nd. <clears throat> and next is The Extraordinaries by TJ Klune. Marissa Myers me Renegades meets Rainbow Rowell's fangirl in this funny and charming queer coming of age story about a fanboy with ADHD and the superheroes he loves. <clears throat> Readers are introduced to Nick Bell, one of the most popular fan fiction writers in the Extraordinaries fandom. After a chance encounter with his favorite superhero and biggest crush, Shadowstar, Nick decides he wants to become an Extraordinary too, no matter what it takes. And he's hoping his reluctant best friend, Seth, will be on board with this plan. But things might get complicated between Nick and Seth, given that Seth might turn out to be the love of Nick's life. And if you're like me and, and have a love of superhero blockbusters and rom-coms, I highly, highly recommend this, this one right here. <clears throat> the Extraordinaries is Clune's love letter to those who have a little bit of extra in them. You will no doubt laugh at all of Nick's shenanigans. He absolutely puts the extra in Extraordinary and while also appreciating the love this queer friend group has for each other. The relationship between Nick and his single father is also an important part of the story as it highlights a relationship often neglected in YA. These characters are loud and they're proud and you won't get enough of them. The Extraordinaries is out on July 14th. <clears throat> Next is The Princess Will Save You by Sarah Henning. If you adore The Princess Bride, you are going to absolutely love The Princess Will Save You. When the king mysteriously dies, Princess Amarande is given an ultimatum, marry a total stranger or forfeit her family's crown. In an attempt to force her hand, a neighboring kingdom kidnaps her true love, Luca, the stable boy. Raised as a warrior by her father, the princess decides to fight back and goes on a journey to rescue the boy she loves. This delightful YA fairy tale is fresh, feminist, and action-packed. Princess Will Save You will be available July 7th. Each of Us a Desert by Marco Shiro. From award-winning author, Marco Shiro comes a powerful coming-of-age fantasy novel about finding home and falling in love amidst the dangers of a desert where stories come to life. Oshiro's YA debut was the Schneider Award-winning Anger is a Gift, which received great critical acclaim for its themes of social justice and mental health. Now Oshiro shifts gears in a fantastical direction with their new YA novel, Each of Us a Desert. Readers will be following Zoe, who is destined to wander the desert alone, speaking her troubled village's stories into its arid winds. Her only companions are the blessed stars above and the lines of poetry magically strewn across dusty dunes. Her one desire is to share her heart with a kindred spirit. And then one night, Zoe's wish is granted in the form of Amelia, the cold and beautiful daughter of the town's murderous conqueror. 
But when the two set out on a magical journey across the desert, they find their hearts could be a match. If only they can survive the nightmare-like terrors that arise when the sun goes down. Set against a desert landscape, landscape plagued with the materialization of nightmares, Each of Us a Desert tells the story of two teenage girls navigating queerness, loss, and finding strength inside oneself in the darkest of times. The book's emotional journey and strong characters will appeal to fans of Laura Ruby, Adam Silvera, and devotees of popular award-winning titles such as When the Moon Was Ours and Love in the Time of Cholera. This comes out on September 15th. And now moving along to tour books, here is Unconquerable Sun by Kate Elliott. For the first time in nearly two decades, Kate Elliott has gone back to her roots and has brought tour a phenomenal space opera trilogy based on her favorite historical person, Alexander the Great, but gender swapped, using her skill in world building and political intrigue to a galactic scale. Unconquerable Sun is a thrilling new science fiction adventure set in a rich universe. It's the space opera you've been waiting for. Princess Sun has finally come of age, but the conniving noble houses have never ceased to scheme, and they have plans that need Sun to be removed as heir, or better yet, dead. To survive, the princess must rely on her wits and companions, her biggest rival, her secret lover, and a dangerous prisoner of war. Take the brilliance and and cunning courage of Princess Leia, add in a dazzling futuristic setting where pop culture and propaganda are one and the same, and hold on tight. Unconquerable Sun is available on July 7th. Trouble the Saints by Elia Don Johnson. The dangerous magic of the night circus meets a powerful historical exploration of the Underground Railroad, Railroad and Elia Don Johnson's timely and unsettling novel set against the darkly gl- glamorous backdrop of New York City, where an assassin falls in love and tries to fight her fate at the dawn of World War II. From magical debut authors like Helene Recker or Aaron Morgenstern to perennial bestsellers like Isabel Allende and Alice Hoffman, there is a consistent hunger for sweeping historical novels with hints of magic and mystery and romance. Trouble the Saints combines the reader appeal of New York City from the Harlem Renaissance to the cusp of World War II with a Neil Gaiman-esque twist of fantastical, fantastical storytelling. Trouble of Saints is out July 21st. And now here's a perfect book for all you librarians, a kick-ass new series featuring mercenary librarians. This is Deal with the Devil by Kit Roca. Orphan Black meets the post-apocalyptic Avengers by this best-selling author duo. You will follow Nina, who is an information broker with a mission. She and her team of mercenary librarians use their knowledge to save the hopeless in a crumbling America. When you read Deal with the Devil, you will undoubtedly fall in love with the characters, the delicious romance, and the action adventure where librarians are the heroes in the story. This is great science fiction with a group of strong women who you will cheer for every step of the way. Make sure Deal with the Devil is a part of your library when it hits shelves on July 28th. Attack Surface by Cory Doctorow. We are so excited to have a new Cory Doctorow book to share with you. Attack Surface is a standalone adult novel set in the world of two New York Times bestsellers, Little Brother and Homeland. In her day job as counterterrorism wizard, Masha Maximow made the hacks that allowed repressive regimes to spy on dissidents and manipulate their every move. The perks were fantastic and the pay was obscene. Just for fun and to piss off her masters, Masha sometimes used her mad skills to help those same troublemakers evade detection. It was a dangerous game and a hell of a rush. When her targets were strangers in faraway police states, it was easy to compartmentalize, to ignore the collateral damage of murder, rape, and torture. But when it hits close to home and the hacks and exploits she's devised or directed her friends and family, Masha realizes she has to choose. And whatever choice she makes, someone is going to get hurt. Attack Surface is on sale October 13th. This brings us to a little book called The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue by New York Times bestseller V.E. Schwab. This is an epic, intimate, ambitious novel spanning three centuries. The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue tells a story of a desperate girl who makes a deal with the devil to live as many lives as she can, only to find out that everyone she knows or meets will be doomed to forget her. Until one day in Brooklyn, when she enters a bookshop, meets a boy who can remember her, and begins to rediscover all of her lost hopes and dreams. This is Schwab's most contemporary and accessible novel to date, a powerful tale of romance, art, and magic set against a backdrop of continents and centuries that cuts right to the heart of what it means to be immortal. In the vein of the time traveler's wife and life after life, this is New York Times bestselling author V.E. Schwab's genre-defying tour de force, and it's available October 6th. 
And now I'm also so thrilled to talk to you about To Sleep in a Sea of Stars by New York Times bestselling author Christopher Paolini. Christopher Paolini was a publishing phenomenon at 19, drawing millions of readers towards widely successful Inheritance Cycle series that included Aragon. To Sleep in a Sea of Stars is his first novel in nine years and will strongly appeal to all the readers who grew up loving Christopher and his writing and will introduce them to, adult, to the adult version of the writer they love. In the novel, you will follow Kira Navarez. Exploring new worlds is all Kira ever dreamed of doing, but now she has found her nightmare. On a distant planet ripe for a colony, she has discovered a relic previously unseen by human eyes. It will transform her entirely and forever. Humani humanity will face annihilation. She is alone, but we are not, and there is no going back. Readers will get their hands on a new Paolini book when The Sleep in a Sea of Stars becomes available on September 15th. And now for our forge list, here's And Now She's Gone by Rachel Housel Hall. Featuring two complicated women in a dangerous cat and mouse game, And Now She's Gone explores the nature of secrets and how violence and fear can lead you to abandon everything in order to survive. This has all the ingredients that are hot in the thriller genre right now, psychological suspense, a twisty plot, complicated women, and a dark edge. This book is for fans of Ruth Ware, Karen Slaughter, Lisa Gardner, and Leanne Moriarty. And lastly, from our Tor.com publishing imprint, here's Harrow the Ninth by Tamsin Moore. Harrow the Ninth continues a story begun in Gideon the Ninth, a fun and funny adventurous science fantasy. Set in a far, far future version of the solar system where necromantic houses compete for the favor of the undying emperor, with a healthy dose of sword fighting and magical battles, the series appeals across genres to a huge variety of science fiction readers. Gideon the Ninth's sense of humor, cheerful nihilism, and vibrant queer characters have inspired a rabid fandom, producing a constant outpouring of fan art, cosplay, fan music, and fan fiction that we've never seen for a first book in the series. So we know fans are itching to get their hands on the follow-up, and let me tell you, it will, will not disappoint. Hero the Ninth comes out on August 4th. And that's it for me and Tor. Here's all of Tor's social channels, so I encourage you to follow us for fun updates and exclusive content on all your favorite authors. I've also, also listed our marketing email here for any questions or requests that you may have. And of course, everything you heard that about today from Tor is available by request on NetGalley. Thank you so much for tuning in.